morning and welcome to the graduation mass for the class of 2023. A most significant occasion as we bid our year 12s embarking on the next part of their journey, farewell. Welcome to our official guest, Mr. Ben Rogers, Old Boy Committee, Mr. Peter Meadows and Ms. Julie Puckman, Campbelltown Catholic Club Board Directors, Mrs. Sue Lennox, Principal of St. Patrick's College, Campbelltown, and students, Mr. Craig Braithwaite, College Advisory Council Member, Mrs. Zoran Zevlin, Sports Dinner Committee, Mr. Tony McKee, Foundation Board Member, Mr. Paul Lake, West League's Director, and Mr. Roy Elliott, an old boy and previous Vice School Captain of St. Greg's. We also welcome our members of the Morris Brothers community and welcome to parents, friends, old boys, staff and students of St. Gregory College. At the beginning of each year, our year sevens are welcomed into, their, into this community and accompanied into their first mass by their buddies in year 12. Those year 12 students will now be accompanied into this mass by their little brothers we will wish them well as they begin their last day as students of St. Greg's. But I ask that everyone ensures that their mobile phones are turned to silent, please, and remain seated for the procession.
soup is all I saw The sun forbear to shine But God calling me below Will be forever mine Will be today is Father Sam, who we warmly welcome into our community. Could I ask you to please stand and join in the singing of our gathering hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine. and sisters as we gather today to celebrate this Holy Eucharist in thanking the Lord for the many blessings He has bestowed upon us and most especially to our young boys here who are about to leave this college and start a new, a new beginning of their life. Brothers and sisters, coming together, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Thoughts and Son, Lord God, O Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved son we may abound in good works we make this prayer through Christ our Lord reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. This is what you are to teach the brothers to believe and persuade them to do. Anyone who teaches anything different and does not keep to the sound teachings, which is that of our Lord Jesus Christ, the doctrine which is in accordance with the true religion, is simply ignorant and must be full of self-conceit. All that can come of this is jealousy, contention, abuse, a wicked mistrust of one another and unending disputes by people who are neither rational nor informed and imagine that religion is a way of making a profit. Religion, of course, does bring large profits, but only to those who are content with what they have. People who long to be rich are the prey of temptation. As a man dedicated to God, you must avoid that. You must aim to be saintly, religious, filled with love, faith, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for, and win for yourself the eternal life to which you were called when you made your profession and spoke up for the truth in front of many witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
said to me, come sass these bones and take them. Grab bones, hear the word of the Lord. But this one's talking about sesame bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. So I prophesied and so I was commanded. As I was prophesying, there was a noise around in sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone, and I looked. And tenders of flesh appeared on them, red skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy of the breath, prophesy son of man, and say to it, come from the four winds of breath, and breathe. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus made his way through towns and villages, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. With him went the twelve, as well as certain women who had been cured of evil spirit and ailments. Mary, surnamed the Magdalene, from whom seven of them had gone out. Jonah, the wife of Herod's steward, Chosa, Susanna, and several others who provided for them out of their own resources. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters most especially to our dear graduates. In the first reading from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, Paul admonishes Timothy and his community to be, and I quote, a man dedicated to God. You must aim to be saintly and religious, filled with faith and love, patience and gentle. Fight the good fight of the faith and win for yourself the eternal life to which you were called when you were made, when you made your profession and spoke for the truth in front of many witnesses. 
The message of Paul is very apt for us too, especially for you, our year 12 boys, the graduates. Using the words of St. Paul, I would like to say to you, the college has molded you into a person of who you are today. As you are about to embark a new beginning, a new journey, don't forget what the college has taught you. Continue to aim to be saintly and religious. You were once a boy, but now you are men. Men that is filled with faith, love, patience, and gentleness. And with that characteristic, Continue to fight the good fight of the faith and win for yourselves with what God has stored for you. Continue to be true to yourself and speak for the truth in front of the world. My dear young men, you have a mission to fulfill. It is in the fulfillment of this mission that you will be fulfilled. Your future work is your cooperation in God's works of creation. God continues to create. Your cooperation in the work of God is your mission. Remember, we work not for money, but for loved of God and of our brothers and sisters, of our neighbors. And so my dear graduates, I invite you to be always grateful for what you have achieved because this is a gift, a grace that is bestowed upon you by God. You have lots of advantages in life because of your education. It is by the merits of the Lord that good things abound in your life. Don't leave this college without expressing your gratitude to your mentors, to your teachers, to, your, to the staffs, to the Morris brothers, to your coaches, and to all people in one way or another have molded you to become who you are today. Like the people in the gospel that were mentioned in the gospel who provided, those people that I mentioned also provided out of their own resources, their expertise, their knowledge, their wisdom, it was all imparted to you. They have molded you so that somewhere out there, you too will be like them, be molders of light in the future. And so my dear graduates, I would like to invite you to please stand up and give your teachers, your coaches, your mentors, the staff, the brothers, and all the people who have molded you a round of applause. And of course, and of course, the reason why you are here, don't forget to thank them, your loved ones, your parents, your families, your siblings, your friends, your relatives. They are all here present today because they have guided you and have shown their love to you. So please do thank him also. Thank you. Please sit down. 
And so, my dear friends, the families, the parents, the teachers, the coaches, the brothers, all of you, thank you for molding these men who would be in the future and hopefully praying for them that they too may be molders of life so that they may be able to share what they have learned from this college. My dear graduates, you will be saying your goodbyes to the college, to your friends, and to all the people who have been part of your journey. But this is not the end. This is just the unfolding of a new beginnings that you are going to trod, to trod in the journey called life. But then, carry with you all your experiences, your learnings, and the, and the character of being a St. Gregory College graduate. And always remember, don't forget the teaching that the college has imparted on you. And be inspired always by St. Marceline Campania. Continue to be a man, to be young men of strong mind and gentle heart. And this is the mark of you, a graduate of St. Gregory College. Once again, congratulations, and may God continue to bless you. Amen. all rise for the prayers of the faithful. In an increasing secular world that strives for conformity, we are reminded that we are called to be different, to be Christ-like, to give nothing less than total gift of ourselves. Filled with joy of this celebration, let us turn, pray for the confidence to meet this challenge. For every petition, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders, Pope Francis, Bishop Ryan, leaders of our Mars communities, heads of state, and all who influence in our communities. May they be strong and authentic, answering the call to lead with generosity and selfless of love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the members of our church. May their example inspire others to open themselves to the risk of sharing love, forgiveness, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We, pray for, we pray for St. Gregory's College family, brothers, staff, students, ex-students, families, and friends. May we strive to be more like Christ as we follow in the footsteps of the saints who have paved our way. Mary, our good mother, St. Gregory the Great, St. Marcelin Champagne, and St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parents, carers, and families. We are grateful for their love and their care as they make Jesus known to us. May we always express this gratitude through our efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to the Year 2 as graduates of 2023. May they be constantly drawn to their Creator God and the person and message of Jesus. May they willingly share their witness and enthusiasm and gratitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those members of our Morris family who have died and all who grieve the loss of family, friends and loved ones. We rest secure in the knowledge that Christ has entrusted them to care of his Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Tanya entrusted his brothers and their work to the special care of Mary, our good mother. As a Marsh community, let us turn to Mary, our model of humi humility, simplicity, and modesty. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, blessed is the fruit of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at our death. Amen. Loving Father, see in us our faith in Christ and our desire to live the gospel as we are called to do. Help us to grow as people, to love as Christ loved. We ask this through Christ our Lord. symbols of extraordinary gifts for which we have been truly grateful during our time at St. Mary's College. The frame symbolizes our parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters. We are grateful for their patience and unconditional love. Black symbolizes our teachers and all the staff of St. Gregory's College. We are grateful for their commitment and compassion. holds the names of all members of the Maris family. We are grateful for all in this community who have helped to form us into fine young men. By their presence, they have contributed to our understanding of what it means to be a follower of Christ. The 2022 jersey symbolizes the boys. We are grateful for the mateship, the stories, and the memories. the everyday moments of our lives and the invitation to find God in those moments to enter into a relationship with him. On retreat last year, each of the youth hall students wrote a prayer for his future on a stick and planted this symbolically in the soil. Our prayers for our future, which will be planted in the soil at the tenth of the new dawn, have become a part of our celebration. Yeah. 
and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings Lord we pray and in sanctifying them grant that they may profit up salvation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with thee. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works, through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of 
his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary, the good mother, with, the blessed, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the blessed apostles, and Marceline and Gregory, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Brothers and sisters, behold Jesus. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Yeah.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Please all be seated. I think there's only need for me to say two words today. Thank you. Saying anything else would be, well, a little bit superfluous. Good morning, Mr. Brennan, staff, the family and friends of the graduating class of 2023, students, and of course, my fellow graduates. If you asked me 12 months ago about today, I would have dismissed you, believing that this day would never truly arrive. Even if you asked me at the beginning of this week, I still would not have believed you. But here we are, after the last class, the last singing practice, the last recess and lunch, the last piece of homework completed, and the last mass as, St. as students of St. Gregory's College, here we stand. And for 146 young men sitting in front of me, our contributions to that story are coming to a close. We, here today, are writing the final verse in what I think is a pretty amazing story a chapter in the story of the St. Greg's community, a verse which for us consists of challenges and bravery, of pushing the boundaries of whatever labels and expectation our society sets for us as young men. But what does that St. Greg's community really mean? Well, to me, it's a group of individuals who despite differing interests, opinions, and perspectives, come together under the patronage of St. Gregory's College to promote shared values and goals. And today is a celebration of members of that community. You see, families don't necessarily have to agree on everything. After all, disagreements are a natural part of any group who spend a significant amount of time together. But what binds us together is a diversity of perspectives. Core pillars of communal values and behaviors and a shared end goal and the graduating class of 2023 embodies these facets. Today, we reminisce on the achievements, accomplishments, and acumen of the students of the graduating class of 2023. But to bring, but to bring it back to those two simple but pertinent words, thank you. What better place to start than with our family, and especially our parents for being there for us through it all? I'm sure each and every one of the parents here today can, re can remember the day they dropped their son off for high school, thinking, oh, how they grow up, to now be sitting here watching them graduate. I'm sure we can all remember our first days at the school, when we thought the year 12s back then were the biggest, most impressive humans, and the scariest thought was forgetting to have your diary signed by the end of the week. For the cold morning drop-offs and the late night pickups for traveling around New South Wales and Australia, allowing us the opportunity to display our talents and abilities, for being a shoulder to cry on and a spout of hearty advice and help. You showed and encouraged us to reach our potential and allowed us to get involved in, in all the wonderful opportunities which this school has, has brought to many of us. Thank you for the past six years and for your continual support and unconditional love. Thank you. To our teachers, people who have had outstanding impacts on us as individuals, who have imprinted ways of thinking, knowledge about new and exciting topics, and have demonstrated how to be good and decent human beings. Thank you for your understanding, your connection, and your time, and the relationships that we've shared over the past six years. You've paved the way for us students and opened countless opportunities. Whether we are transitioning to work, TAFE, university, or any other pathway, we do so understanding and appreciating the relationships we've shared with you. To all those who make up the staff of this college, to the maintenance and cleaning staff, thank you. To the finance and administration staff, thank you. To the teaching staff, 
Thank you. You are the pillars upon which St. Greg's is built. You exemplify the importance of respect and tolerance, opening avenues for discussion and debate. You pave the way for our end goal to be reached, to become young men who acknowledge the importance of hard work, of simplicity, of care for others, and a sensitivity to, that extends to all of our relationships. To the students of St. Gregory's College, thank you for contributing to the tapestry of this place, for filling the yard and classrooms with life and energy, for sparking friendships in other fields of college life, and for making this day feel so special for us in 12s. I truly hope that you cherish the friendships you make and the time you spend with your teachers. Value their knowledge and advice as much as you can. And look to the future with positivity and anticipation. The Greg's community is one which celebrates your difference. Continue to be yourself and embrace all aspects of college life. As the graduating class of 2023 has shown, in the face of challenges and adversity, show your bravery and your commitment to yourself and, your, and this community. Despite what differences you may share, recognize the shared values that we all hold and the end goal which we all reach together. I challenge you all to be yourself, to push yourself beyond the boundaries you may set, to apply yourself in everything you do, to take hold of the opportunities that this place has to offer. Don't shorten your verse because you think it's uncool to try new things. Fill those pages. Make the most of your time at St. Greg's. Look to the graduating class of 2023 for inspiration. We've pushed ourselves. Individuals have applied themselves in various aspects of college life. They have stepped out of their comfort zones and benefited because of it. They have been their unequivocal selves. And finally, to my fellow students, Year 12. The past six years has been riddled with challenges, obstacles, and discourses, and yet our grade, our group, have shown our ability to rise above those setbacks and embrace who we are, whether that's on the sporting field, in the classroom, on the stage, or in the relationships we foster with each other. We are, we are a diverse group of young men. I extend to you a promise that I gave this leadership, this badge, and this place everything I had. And boy, weren't there some highlights. Whether it was the great Italian excursion back in year eight, where we all ate far too much pizza and pasta, or the time spent in the classrooms over the past 12 months, cultivating relationships with teachers and peers as we approach and work together before our HSC exams. The little moments will stick with me. The smiles as we pass by in the corridor, the banter in the classroom, the time spent laughing on the yard and the collective appreciation and identity found during our time as students at St. Gregory's College. But I look to the next chapter, to the next song, and to the next verse to contribute to. I'm excited for the future, and I hope that you are too. From me to you, good luck with everything that you do. As captains of the past have concluded their speeches, the same words echo out. Quite some virus met this. For the final time, goodbye and thank you. Angus for those special words. To Reverend Brothers, to our special guests, to our families and friends who have joined us, to the young people of students of St. Gregory's, and of course our graduating class of 2023. And I thank everybody for their attendance today. Looking around, we, we've set out 2,000 chairs and we've still got people standing. So I think that says a lot about you as a, as a class of 23, that just so many people wanted to be here together to celebrate what is a great group of young men. Before I speak briefly about them, I would like to, to thank Father for his attendance th th this morning, uh, for a beautiful homily and, and, a, and a lovely service prepared by Mrs. Clark and a, and a group of many people behind the scenes to get that happening. To our musicians, who've been wonderful as always, Mr. Bombardieri and others who, uh, who put together the assembly 
earlier this morning. And a very big shout out to our maintenance team. I'm not sure if they're here, but anyone that was in this hall at nine o'clock this morning to come back in at 11.30 and see it completely rearranged, that just doesn't happen by magic. And the place looks absolutely sensational. And that's due to the hard work of our maintenance and cleaning staff. Irish playwright and political activist George Bernard Shaw, who lived in the, the late 19th and, and 20th centuries and died at the age of 94, was awarded many prizes. He received the Nobel Peace Prize in Literature in 1925 and the Academy Award in 1938, but always refused state honours, including an Order of Merit in 1946. He was described by many, in, in many circles, as only second to Shakespeare as a British dramatist, and he wrote over 60 plays. So he's a man of great wisdom and obviously of great age, and when he was reflecting on his life, I was reading something some time ago, and it did actually make me think of the class of 2023, and I'd like to share this with you, both as a challenge, but also as a reflection of how I've seen you in my time with you from Year 7s, when I was here up to you graduating today. And he says, and I quote, this is the true, true joy in life, being used for a purpose recognised by yourself as a mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to make you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and as I live it, it is my privilege to do what I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch, which I got hold of for the moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to the future generations. To me, the class of 2023 have been indeed a splendid torch. For our future years, for our children as young as year five up to our year 11s. And we've, we've heard a lot this morning about different things that they've achieved. But now it's time to start again, in a new way, in a new context. But before you go, and there's been a lot of advice given to the class of 2023, there's just a few things that I'd like to add. Angus has sort of touched on some of these, but I encourage you to continue to challenge the norms of this world as you embark on your new journey. Don't accept phrases like, this is how it's always done, or bad luck, that's life. You have an incredible skill set amongst you to generate and drive positive change. Please ensure you keep your faith, however that currently looks. There is great liberation and serenity that when faced with difficult decisions or situations, take a breath and release them to God and come back to them later. Know that you are never truly alone, no matter how you feel. Your God and your Greg's family will, will ride the wave of life with you, through good and bad. And Roy Elliott touched on that so beautifully earlier this morning. As a Marist man, take the doors that are open for you. But more importantly, open those doors for others. Live a life of gratitude, being grateful for all you have, and the people who are part of your life and express that to people daily. And finally, and this is for a couple of special people I spoke to last night, always be good to your mum. There's certainly going to be situations you're going to be involved in many relationships through your life, but the bond between a mother and son can never be broken. And I know, as I said, my mother's an 83-year-old and she's someone I still talk to regularly and, and visit all the time. So I know that relationship will stand the test of time and other state. So Marcel and Champagne wish Paris institutions to develop good Christians and good citizens. To me, and I've said this many times to the cohort, but good Christians is all really about love. When we, I was fortunate to go to St. Patrick's graduation a few days ago, and in the homily the priest spoke about, put it, love is really just putting the needs of others before yourself. And to me, that's what a good Christian is. It's simply love. Not the love that you see on TV or you hear on social media. It's pure love where the needs of others always have to come before your own. If you live a life like that, and that's what Marcelin asked, that is true love and that is living. And also good citizens. 
Good citizens for me is just simply making a difference in the world. So I would like to conclude by thanking the class of 2023, and I do this on behalf of everybody here today. As I said, we are in excess of 2,000 people who are here to celebrate you and all that you have done. And you go with my very, very best wishes always, and I wish you nothing but good luck, happiness, and love throughout your life. God bless. time to say our final farewell to the graduating class of 2023. During your time here, gents, you have been nurtured and you have grown, but now it's time to leave this world and be adults out there. I invite you, Year 12, to stand and join in your prayer of the graduates. Lord, As we come to the end of our Eucharistic celebration today, I offer you gents my personal congratulations and wishes for great success in the future. You have made me laugh and there have been tears, but I'm very confident that the young men who are leaving us today are going to go out and do great things and I wish you much success. My prayer for you is that wherever you go, Whatever work you do, that you continue to sow seeds of kindness in all of your relationships with the people that you meet. And I invite the staff of the college to come forward as we pray our blessing song.
family in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.
just play this out really quickly. And just before we do the sub tour, I'm just going to explain what's going to be happening after our uh, mass finishes. We're going to be going to a farewell tunnel. Now, there are, as Mr. Brennan said, 2,000 people in the room, so we will go uh, bit by bit. Uh, so what we'll do is our special guests, I'm going to get you to leave first after our sub tour this afternoon, um, followed by our year five and six students uh, out the door. So the, the tunnel will be starting at the top for U12. So U12, I'll get you to stay after after mass. You can stay seated while we get everybody out into position. Our kindies, ones, twos, threes, and fours are already in place outside. Our fives and sixes, you'll go straight out your store and line up. Um, and I'll, I'll come back and tell you where everybody else is going, where we're going first. But if I can have our special guests head out after our sub tour, out the side doors. Our visitors at the back of the college, you can go out, out the back doors. And uh, as I said, our five and six is out this side, but we can stand for our final hymn, our sub to one, and then I'll go through that version. Gentlemen, you 12, you can just take a seat and relax for a while. To our special guests on my right, I might get you to head out now these doors. Thanks, Year 5 and 6. Year 11, you're going to be heading right down the back.